Good morning, Hoosiers, and welcome to Times News 24-7, brought to you by the Noblesville Times Online in Living Color from the Times Studio. I'm Stu Clampett with your top headlines for Friday, March 4th, 2011. In our top story today, a Hamilton County grand jury issued a seven-charge indictment against Indiana Secretary of State Charlie White Thursday, including several charges relating to voter fraud. The charges stem from when White served on the Fishers Town Council before running for and winning the Secretary of State race in 2010. He also served as the Hamilton County Republican Party chair during that same time period. White was registered at his ex-wife's home when he voted in the May primary but lived on the other side of Fishers. He said at the time there was no intent to deceive, calling the situation an, quote, honest mistake. State Democrats who started pushing for the investigation in September disagreed. White faces several felony counts, seven in fact, and details are available in today's Times. If found guilty of a felony, White would have to step down from his position. White turned himself into authorities Thursday in Hamilton County. In lighter news, a gathering of young business people from the area on Wednesday, the Young Professionals Group through the Noblesville Chamber of Commerce hosted a bowling social at the Stardust Bowl in hopes of, that friendships would be made, networks established, and businesses grown. Lindsay Sweet with the Young Professionals Group said that the bowling event accomplished its goal. Kyle Sweet with the Financial Planners Group. In lighter news, a gathering of young business people from the area Wednesday, Young Professionals Group, through the Noblesville Chamber of Commerce, hosted a bowling social at the Stardust Bowl in hopes that friendships would be made, networks established, and businesses grown. Lindsay Sweet with the Young Professionals Group said the bowling event accomplished its goal. Kyle Sweet with Financial Partners Group had the highest score of 184 for the event. This is the second year for the Noblesville YPG and organizers are energized about the prospects 2011 will bring. For the third year, the Bray Family Homestead, part of Hamilton County Parks and Recreation System, will open its gates to the public for a demonstration of maple syrup operation. From tree to finished product, naturalists with the department will explain and demonstrate using several stations how sap from the maple tree is tapped, collected, and turned into syrup. This year, the event runs from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the homestead at 4528 Sheridan Avenue, it's Indiana 38, west of Noblesville. There is no charge to attend, but pre-registration is required at this site. You can also call 774-2500. Sports and local weather with Paul Poteet in Studio B are both up next. The heat is on. The Times and several Hamilton County businesses are helping local residents afford utility costs with our new The Heat Is On promotion. The, heat is on. the Times will pay up to $200 for one utility bill submitted by promotion winners. One day each week in February, the Times will publish a promotion page and entry form for The Heat Is On. Entrants must be 18 years of age or older to win, and only one entry per person per week is allowed. Keep your eyes on The Times because The Heat Is On. The heat is on. I'm meteorologist Paul Poteet. Happy Friday and take an umbrella. For the next 24 hours across this part of central Indiana, we've got a flood watch in place as we head into the weekend. And as we start this update from Times News 24-7, thanks again for watching. We're going to be watching rain throughout half of the weekend. Here's a graphic showing you that the flood watch covers all of central Indiana, so everyone's under the gun on this one. A general two-inch rainfall is very likely. In some places, we could have isolated three-inch totals. So that's what we're setting up for as we move into the weekend. The heaviest rain from this will fall throughout Friday night overnight into Saturday morning. So as a result, we are all wet. What's driving all of this? Well, the weather map for Friday shows an area of low pressure back out to the west. Eventually, it'll drag a cold front through here. That'll bring down the temperatures through the day on Saturday, and eventually we'll be cooler and see some snow showers around by Saturday night, although that doesn't look like a big deal. As you can see from this map, the severe weather stays this time down to the southwest of us, so at least we don't have to worry about that. And how much rain could fall? 
The bullseye right over the eastern part of the state, two to three inches there in general across central Indiana. Two inches of rain is possible from this system. So that's the basic setup as we head into the wet weekend. Now, courtesy of WTHR Channel 13, here's a look at some of the general forecast trends. I think today will be warmer here in Hamilton County than what this particular image shows, up around 60 degrees because I think we'll have some breaks in the rain through the afternoon as this warm front passes into our area today. Some much milder air is introduced. So about 60 for the high. The average would be the upper 40s. Then tonight we'll be into the 50s, and tomorrow I think we'll start in the 50s in the morning and fall to about the 40s, low to mid 40s by the time we get into the afternoon. Tomorrow night, much cooler, upper 20s and then upper 30s on Sunday, but at least it'll be dry, dry Monday. And the next big chance of rain, as you see in that forecast, is going to be coming by about the middle of next week, on Wednesday of next week. So that's a look at our extended forecast for the next couple of days, that next big rain chance Wednesday, and plenty of it to go around tonight and into Saturday. Thanks a lot for watching. You can get the updates on the radar anytime online at paulpotet.com, the latest radar and plus all kinds of other non-weather fun. And I'll see you again soon with another update right here on Times News 24-7. The heat is on. The Times and several Hamilton County businesses are helping local residents afford utility costs with our new The Heat Is On promotion. The, heat is on. the Times will pay up to $200 for one utility bill submitted by promotion winners. One day each week in February, The Times will publish a promotion page and entry form for The Heat Is On. Entrants must be 18 years of age or older to win, and only one entry per person per week is allowed. Keep your eyes on the times because the heat is on. The heat is on. As the Noblesville gymnastics team has gotten closer to sectionals, it's also gotten closer to the 100 point mark. Getting to the triple digits is always a goal for any gymnastics squad, but the Millers have an extra incentive to do it Saturday as they travel to New Palestine for the sectional tournament. Noblesville will be one of nine teams at this event, with the top three moving on to the regionals. And in college sports, Westfield's Kate Flutterback wasted no time making a splash in the college swimming world. Flutterback, a freshman at the University of Arizona, swam in four events in the Pac-10 Conference Championship, which took place last weekend at the King County Aquatic Center in Seattle. Not only did she place high in two individual events and two relays in which she swam, but she also earned NCAA provisional cut times in all four events. And the DePaul University baseball team has more than just a touch of Hamilton County. Six players who played their high school baseball in this county are now playing for the Tigers. That's your local news for Friday. For more information on these and other stories, visit our homepage or pick up a print copy of the Noblesville Times. For Times News 24-7, I'm Stu Clampett. Thank you.